morning, Marauders! It's Wednesday! So this week we're teaching something cool, and I thought, what can be cooler than opera? Opera? What? Yes, that is correct. The stuff that's performed on a stage with the large lady in the Viking hat with the horn. Not really, though. That's a stereotype. Opera is actually pretty cool, especially how it started and evolved from styles and genres from the late Renaissance and early Baroque. Opera is also one of the most important musical genres of all time. Seriously, there's two whole chapters devoted to it in my textbook. No joke. So, how did opera start? Opera evolved from three main Renaissance genres, the pastoral drama, the madrigal slash madrigal cycle, and the intermedio, which is probably the most important one. An intermedio was a little skit type thing that was performed between the acts of a play. Because the Renaissance theaters didn't have curtains that they could close to signify the end of a scene, they would perform the intermedio to signify the end of an act and to distract the audience from the possible set changes that were occurring in the background. Intermedio were often comprised of song, dances, scenery, and costumes, and were sometimes very elaborate. The most elaborate intermedi of all was the 1589 intermedi for the play La Pellegrina, which was performed at the wedding of Grand Duke Ferdinand de' Medici of Tuscany to Christine of Lorraine. You can tell he's a pretty important guy because of the length of his name. There were two very important guys that worked on this intermedio, Jacopo Perry and Giulio Caccini. Now these two were trying to revive Greek theater in a new and improved style. They wanted to generate the ethical effects of ancient Greek music by creating modern works with equal emotional power. They were pretty big on ancient culture and things during this period. You would have been learning this stuff in school rather than some useless thing like calculus. Actually, only the boys would be learning this kind of stuff. Sorry, ladies, you would have been learning how to be a good wife. Don't you just love the Baroque period? Anyway, Perry and Caccini were convinced that ancient Greek theater was sung in its entirety, so they set out to recreate this by setting Ottavio Rinici's poem Daphne in 1589. And now you're thinking, hooray, it's the first opera! And you're correct in thinking that, but not really. Daphne may have been the first opera, but Perry and Caccini aren't really credited with the creating of opera. There's another important dude that we'll talk about in a minute. Now, if you ever saw Daphne performed, you'd be like, this isn't opera! Though you'd have a bit of a difficult time doing that since not much of the music actually survives. This was a very different style of singing than what you may be used to because these guys believed that the voice was the most important aspect of the song. So oftentimes, it was just a vocal line with very simple harmonic accompaniment. Weird, I know. Now back to that other important dude I mentioned before. Probably the most important dude in the whole history of opera is Claudio Monteverdi. I really want to call him Monteverdi Monty for some reason. I don't know why, but I don't think he'd be very impressed with me. Yes, Perry and Caccini are the guys to write the first opera, but Monteverdi wrote the best early opera. He wrote L'Orfeo in 1607 and was much more musically and dramatically affected than that other stuff Perry and Caccini came up with. Monteverdi used a greater variety of instruments, and his experience setting madrigals that were known for their expressive text setting and their intense drama helped him out a lot. He also used a more varied Recitative than Perry and Caccini, and the people liked his stuff a lot better. Recitative is the term used to describe the aspect of opera that's supposed to imitate dialogue. So, a very early form of opera has been created at this point, and it began to spread throughout Italy, but it also found its way to other European countries. One very important step that occurred in the development of opera was the opening of the first public opera house in Venice in 1637. Before this point, opera had been dependent on wealthy patrons and aristocrats, but now the public could enjoy the wonder and mystery that is opera too. Basically, slightly less people, but still pretty wealthy people. Now, opera begins to spread to the other main European powers, France, England, and Germany. France developed a style that was very different from the Italians, that was based more on dance, and England and Germany developed operatic styles that were a mix of the two. Now let's go visit 17th century France for a bit. The king at this point is Louis XIV, which was a pretty good king as the history of France goes. He built Versailles and the Louvre, which at that point was a palace and not a museum. For most of Louis' reign, his favorite musician was Jean-Baptiste Lully, who wasn't actually French, but Italian. What? Yeah, I know, weird. Actually, one of the weird weirdest things about Lily is how he died. You see, back then, how they conducted was they stamped a big staff on the floor. He accidentally stabbed his foot one day and got gangrene. You can Google it if you want, but it's kind of disgusting. Lily came to France in 1642 as a tutor, and he eventually became the most important musical guy in Louis' court. He was in charge of pretty much anything to do with music in the royal court for a very long time. Remember Monteverdi? Well, Lily's kind of his French doppelganger. Lily developed a style called Trente de Lyrique, which was very, very different from the Italian style, but was also a very important genre in the French Baroque period. In comparison, French opera is very centered around dance styles and dance music. The patterns and rhythms found in dance music were often found in opera as well. The style was also much lighter and pleasant. The French also preferred more natural sounds, unlike the Italians who preferred Castrati to sing their male lead roles. Yes, that means a male soprano singing the part because he can. I think you can extrapolate from there what I actually mean. 
So that is early opera in the 17th century. I could keep going on for a very long time, but I'm sure you're bored right now, and I think I'm running out of time, too. Housekeeping! Your reread update is chapter 23 today, chapter 24 tomorrow. The Sorting Hat's back! So whoever I pick has to do their next video as their favorite Disney princess. Let's see who gets to do that. Mm. Oh look, Emily! Have fun with that. Kylie, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Installment of Five Awesome Marauders is brought to you by a history of Western music, the bane of my existence.